I welcome to the show I'm Chris Lato, retired F-16 pilot, and now investigating the UAP enigma. I have a little bit different show today. I want to talk about the state of the UAP community. It seems like we've been hit by a full gut punch, and there's been a noted departure of a few key podcasters. I want to go through those departures and talk about my own recent experience and how I'm doing. The question is, has there been any marked change in the phenomenon? Have we been proven false? Have all the claims been made false? Is it really down for the count? Or is the UAP community going to stand back up and continue fighting? Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Okay, first person I want to highlight stepping back is Kurt Jaimungal from Theories of Everything podcast. This is his podcast. I consider Kurt a, a friend. I think he's a great podcaster. What's interesting, and we'll play the clip here in a second, but as he's stepping back, if you look at his most recent interview here is with Richard Dolan. I've also interviewed Richard Dolan. Five days ago, 182,000 views, 21 times his normal view rate. And if we go down to his most popular videos here, you'll notice, look, number one is Ross Coltart with 2.1 million views. That is a lot of views, greater than 100x, as well as Lou Elizondo, greater than 100x, 1.7 million views. And then Jeremy Corbell, 1.4 million views, top three. But then again, we have George Knapp and Colm Kelleher, 1.1 million views, so over 100x of his normal view rate. So four out of his top five most watched videos seems like by a long way, by greater than 100x, are UFO bigwigs. Let's hear what Kurt has to say, why he's stepping back. This is from X. My last interview with a UFO bigwig was eight months ago. And in part, the reason for the lack of frequency with these with this topic it's because I've I've backed away. I've backed away. Why? Because I'm I'm disappointed and I'm dismayed. So the reason is that there's always the promise of some tangible governmental or scientifically sanctioned data that's just around the corner. There was the rumor of 40 new whistleblowers coming forward. It never panned out, but even if it was 140, then it's the next question is so what? Because there's only so much that that talking can do. And I see that. I see acrimony developing in the in the people who are involved in the scene. So Kurt hadn't interviewed a, a UFO bigwig, as he calls him, for eight months. And then he interviewed Richard Dolan and had 150,000 views in just a few days. So again, another hit video I would consider on his channel. And then he released this, that he's actually disappointed and dismayed. And he'd be stepping back from the topic, again, from the UFO topic. Why? Because it, it is such a difficult topic. And it is, right? I mean, if you look at the CIA has literally been involved in this topic for, for decades. And you're talking about changing the mainstream mentality, going against the grain is just very, very difficult. And I can attest to that, that, that it is difficult to be in this, in this field. Why again, because you're going against the mainstream narrative and for decades, multiple decades, 80 years, the stigma has been very, very strong. And in later videos, I'll show you why the stigma is still strong in other forms of science. And that's why I really look into all these other big bang theories to go against the mainstream narrative that dark matter is real, that dark energy is real, and that the big bang is, is a real event. And I, I'll have a video releasing later showing that this is actually not the case. There is tons of evidence, very clear evidence against the Big Bang, and there's very little evidence for the Big Bang and dark matter, and yet, in the mainstream science, this isn't changing. It's still the same. So unfortunately, Kurt says he'll be stepping back. His videos are very popular, and it's unfortunate because he does do great interviews. Salvatore Pais was another uh, noted interview. He's also interviewed Greer as well. So hopefully we'll see him back again as he's rested up and we get some more data. Because has has anything really changed? I'll show a clip later on in this video that, no, the UFO topic is still moving ahead in the background. It's still moving ahead. I even heard from Michael Herrera. He said he's working behind the scenes again with the insiders. And hopefully this summer, we'll get him back on the show with some new information. So it's going. 
Okay, it's just a very, very difficult topic. Let's go to the second person who stepped away. Okay, this is Merge Podcast with Ryan Graves. And unfortunately, this is his last interview on the Merge Podcast was five months ago. And since then, he's only released one video, which is really the Merge Podcast 2023 year in review. So Merge Podcast hasn't released an interview in five months, unfortunately. And this is the 2023 podcast year in review, I can only hope, I haven't talked to Ryan Graves, I can only hope that he's actually just taking a break for a few months. But based on not releasing an, uh, an interview in five months, I'd say he's definitely taking a step back, the same as Kurt Jaimungle. But Ryan Graves is still working behind the scenes for his Americans for Safe Aerospace. I released a video uh, two weeks ago on UAPs in the European Union Parliament, and Ryan Graves actually called in and gave a very good uh, remarks on UAPs and what they're doing in the background. He's also inter introduced a bill into Congress in January, Americans for Safe Aerospace, I believe it's called, and that will actually allow pilots to have a, a some sort of avenue to report UAPs. Again, the stigma is just so huge, and I'll show my next video will actually show that the stigma is huge just in normal science. It's just normal science. If you say the Big Bang doesn't exist, they will not let you publish that in a paper. You cannot actually publish in any sort of mainstream articles, any sort of, hey, the Big Bang did not exist, okay? So if you wanna say, hey, we're trying to do science experiments to figure out if aliens exist, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna be even worse. I mean, if you can't even say the Big Bang didn't exist, how can you say that aliens exist and could possibly be here, that we could have an extraterrestrial presence actually here? It's going to be very, very difficult. But behind the scenes, it's still going on. There's an amazing shot of Ryan at the Congress, and I was there July 26. If you think about it, government moves slowly. It moves very slowly. And bureaucracy, you're fighting a giant bureaucracy. They know how to slow things down. The mics. So Mike Turner and a few congressional leaders were able to shut down the actual bill, the Disclosure Act that was coming from Charles Schumer last year. So it just moves slowly. It's a slow moving topic. It's been 80 years. So we're not just going to punch through with a few podcasts and just make this work. So they're taking a step back, Ryan Graves and Kurt Jaimungo, but hopefully they'll be back in the game soon. And it feels like it was really the arrow report. <laughs> the Department of Defense All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, the report part one, so volume one, that came out and said exactly what Blue Book cover page said. There's nothing to see here, right? There's no evidence. We've seen no evidence. We called the CIA. We asked them, did they have any alien materials? And they said no. And we called the NSA and we asked them, did they have any alien materials? And they also said no. So we've looked, and that's what volume one said. That's what volume one said. And interestingly is they didn't cover any of the major cases, the major cases that really make a difference, such as the Nimitz. They didn't mention anything about the East Coast events, all the range fowler reports that I've covered on this channel. And they didn't cover any of the recent cases that were brought up in the actual hearing. They didn't address David Grush's main claims. The 40 whistleblowers, now up to 50 whistleblowers, have not all even testified to Arrow. And again, Arrow tried to contact them. They called David Grush, and yeah, he just never called him back. But the government knows public relations, okay? The DOD knows how to operate in foreign areas. They know public relations. They know propaganda. Public relations is actually a part of the war effort. So they know how to do this. If you notice, when the error report came out, what was in the news? Of, across all the news networks, nothing to see here, right? There is no evidence of extraterrestrial, no evidence of non-human intelligence, despite all the claims that it was coming. If you look at it, this is the Department of Defense, All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. So the Department of Defense is saying, that there is nothing to see here. That that is what they have they have always done. This is nothing new. And then you saw across all the major news networks, nothing to see here. Space.com finds Pentagon office 
finds no empirical evidence for alien technology in new report. All investigative efforts at all levels of classification concluded that most sightings were ordinary objects and phenomena and the result of misidentification. Most sightings, again, you, we don't care about most sightings. We don't care about most sightings. We care about the important sightings. We find here from the BBC, US says UFO sightings likely secret military tests. Okay, again, they said most sightings can be explained. It's the same thing as Blue Book, again, most sightings. We don't care about most sightings. And this is actually in the error report. Arrow investigated and reached conclusions on the majority of the claims made in these narratives. In most cases, Arrow was able to locate the company's people and programs that were conveyed to Arrow through interviews. And they asked them, and they said no. Arrow will report the results of the unresolved allegations in volume two. So volume one was def just all the easy cases that they made the phone calls and they said, hey, they said there's nothing to see here. Volume two will actually include unresolved cases. So that would be the ones that we actually care about, right? The Nimitz, all the East Coast events. What about all the nuclear engagements, the nuclear cases? I'm going to show another case here just from last year, from 2023, that was, again, not included in this report. No mention of it, along with many other cases, very critical, important cases, such as the Nimitz. Okay, this is from the hearings, July 26. I attended. You can actually see uh, the full hearings on my channel. ...from Eglin Air Force Base indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. Uh, we asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico, and when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Okay, so again, you can go to my channel uh, that live stream and actually check it out if you want to hear David Fravor's response but that is just an amazing account and that account from Matt Gates whatever you think of him politically right he's he's done a, an amazing job for UAP disclosure and he's been on the armed services committee for he said 7 years there and he responded to this actual account of this amazing UAP right so they have radar hits on it. There shouldn't be any other aircraft in that airspace. And this is definitely Air Force. He said it's at Eglin Air Force Base. We don't know the actual aircraft, but it uh, it sounds like an F-16 to me. As they approach now, they get an image of an, a large orb. 
And like he said there, something that he couldn't account for and the pilot who was a major, right? So you're going to have a test pilot. He's going to be an experienced pilot. He's a major. It's not some new well, rookie pilot, right? This is actually higher ranking than Ryan Graves in his career. So you have an experienced pilot over the Gulf Coast of Mexico in our airspace with this amazing account. And they have radar data and they have images. This was not included in the aero report. There was no mention of that, that case or, or many other cases, plus the Nimitz. Dr. Kirkpatrick, after he left, he's at a, a conference, asked about um, the actual Nimitz case. And he said at the conference, you guys have as much information as I do, meaning they, Aero doesn't have any of the radar data that was taken from the Ichu Hawkeye. The radar tapes were taken and from the Aegis, Kevin Day, Gary Voorhees. They can attest that the actual radar tapes were removed from the Aegis. Where did those radar tapes go? Right? Arrow did not find any of this stuff. They didn't look. Danny Sheehan said that he gave to Arrow, actually, the place they need to go and look to find all this information. Did they go? The answer is no. So all they did is the same thing they did for Blue Book was write a cover page over what could be a lot of data. They, they had a chance to actually go and search for this stuff. And what did they do? They called the CIA and asked them. That's it. They called. They called up to Raytheon, Lockheed Martin. They said to these companies and asked them, do they have any UFO material? What do you, what do you think they're going to say? Are they going to change their mind? As I mentioned, uh, as I'll show in a later video, you can't even say in an actual research paper, they will not allow you to peer review a paper that says the Big Bang did not exist, or here is the evidence against the Big Bang. Why? Because it's the mainstream science narrative, and all of your science funding comes from large government organizations, such as NASA. I also mentioned I talk about my own situation. Okay, So I did have what's called uh, acute psychosis, basically lack of sleep, introduced with crazy synchronicities that I saw in my own life. I can only say, yeah, your brain actually goes off the rails sometimes. I have PTSD from my career in the Air Force. I hadn't dealt with it. And I think that all just spiraled together, kind of cycled together to put me, you know, off kilter, to actually get my brain off kilter to where I just went, yeah, off the rails. I found... Uh, a theory I thought was correct. I still think many parts of the theory are correct, that light makes up matter. Matter is actually made of light. I think we will find that out through artificial intelligence. But I found that theory and combined with all these other things going on in my life, combined with PTSD, just kind of, yeah, put me off the rails. And what I found many Americans actually deal with, 57 million Americans are dealing with mental health issues. My body feels fine. It feels great. I can't, my body feels better than I can remember. Um, but your mind actually is a, is a very important part of your body. And I think for me, I just had a, an episode in dealing with past issues, dealing with PTSD. And I'm working through that now. And I just want to say thank you so much to the community, all the amazing community members. And that comes from my wife as well. She wanted to say thank you as well to all the, uh, the amazing support that the community gave. Um, because this is a very difficult topic. As we've seen today, two podcasters stepping back for sure. Kurt Jaimungal, even though it's his four out of his five top videos, or the UFO bigwigs, as he calls them, he's stepping back. Same thing for merged podcast Ryan Graves. He hasn't made a video in, in five months. Why? Because it's difficult. It's not an easy job being a, being a podcaster. And it's not an easy job being a podcaster, definitely in the UFO community. So again, thanks thanks for all your support for everyone that, that has helped. And I really appreciate it. My family appreciates it as well. So I'm on the mend, getting back in the game. And I hope you guys also enjoy the videos I make about uh, the science, the mainstream science narrative, because I think that is related. I think cosmology and our understanding of the universe is definitely related to this and why why you cannot say that the big bang did not exist or that the theory of dark matter has been falsified why you cannot say that it's censored in any of our actual 
science re peer reviewed papers. So please hit the like button on this video. It, it does really help. Subscribe to get future notifications. And if you want to support the channel, I have no sponsorships. I'm only sponsored by the audience, by you. Then you can get additional content as well as early ad free access to all my videos at this little link right here. Here it is at this link. That's patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. You can also, if you, if you don't want to do that, you can go to be a YouTube member and you get early access to the videos as well as uh, I do a monthly live stream. So thanks again to all the members and just thank you for being here. If you're watching now, right as we're in the low of this UFO community, then that means you're, you're very interested in this or you are a UFO community hardcore supporter. So thanks for your support. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.